How's it going everyone? My name is Amin, I'm an anaesthetist working in the UK. In this video I'll talk you through some of the general things that we do in a day, as a lot of people aren't quite sure about the role of the anaesthetist. Today I'll be working in trauma theatres, which is where urgent surgeries take place for broken bones and injuries. We start the day by attending a trauma meeting, where we discuss the patients needing surgery. The orthopaedic surgeons go through x-rays and CT scans, and sometimes MRI scans, and we make a plan for how to best treat the patients. A lot of these patients are frail and elderly and have lots of medical problems, so we need to do a thorough review to make sure we catch any issues that could be problematic. For example, they may be on blood thinning medications, causing them to bleed heavily, and this might need to be reversed. Or they may have a dangerously low blood pressure, which needs to be addressed before surgery. Sometimes the blood results reveal problems that we need to act on, like needing a blood transfusion, or perhaps even being COVID positive. Heading into theatres, I'll first perform safety checks on the anaesthetic machine every morning. It's this device that I'll rely on to keep patients alive when I send them off to sleep with the general anaesthetic. I will also need to prepare a range of medications. Some of these are routine drugs and some of these are emergency medications, ready for when things don't go as planned. We use very powerful drugs in anaesthesia, things that can have crazy effects if you think about it, like a few drops of a liquid that can paralyse the whole body from head to toe almost instantly or a morphine-like drug that can prevent you from feeling pain and can tell your brain to stop breathing. A few of these drugs stay locked away for this reason. The milky white drug is called propofol and is commonly what we use to drift patients off to sleep, otherwise known as inducing anaesthesia. A large part of administering a general anaesthetic is monitoring them throughout the surgery. With every incision, sawing, drilling or nailing, there's a risk of an unwanted response from the heart and lungs. I would need to be on the constant lookout and ensure that the heart and lungs are doing what's required of them. I'd be able to control things like the heart rate, breathing rate, blood pressure and oxygen levels. There's more to it than sending patients off to sleep though. Other than a general anaesthetic, sometimes options for surgery include what's known as regional anaesthesia. This is basically where you can stay awake but have very specific nerves blocked so you don't feel pain in that area. For example, you could have an ankle block for surgery on the toe, an upper limb block for surgery in the arm, or perhaps a spinal anaesthetic for a hip operation. The trauma list varies each day, and you can have issues like broken hips needing replacing following a fall, or broken arms from a traffic accident. Some operations can take under an hour to complete, whereas others can take a whole afternoon. As it's a regular working day, we aim to finish our list before 6, and if there is a backlog then those cases are postponed until the following morning. One thing I like about being an anaesthetist is that once your work is done for the day, you can leave without needing to worry about how your patients are doing. As if there was anything wrong from the surgery or anaesthesia, you'd have identified it and fixed it already. There isn't a huge amount of paperwork to catch up on either, as there's enough time to do all of your documentation throughout the surgery. Heading off home today, I drop by the nursery and collect the baby, having had a good day overall. The rest of the day is reserved solely for family time, with no studying or admin planned. After all, I'm a strong believer in work-life balance being really important. 